Please welcome the commencement platform party led by the members of the City of Albany Pipe Band. The University at Albany Grand Marshal Distinguished Teaching Professor James Acker. Members of the University at Albany faculty, led by Professor David McDowell and 2019 Collins Award recipient Professor Ray Bromley. Marshals, Professor Mary McCarthy and Professor Sanjay Goel. The University at Albany Deans. the Vice Presidents and Senior Leadership of the University at Albany. 2019 Torch Professor Susanna Fessler. Catherine Reed, Director of our Catholic Campus Ministry. Rochelle Conian, Class of 1995, President of the U Albany Alumni Association. 
Members of the University Council, graduate student representative Tom Robertson, faculty representative Zena Lawrence, James Jackson, Mark Egan, and chairman Michael Castellana, class of 1984 and 1992. University Senate Chair James Collins. This morning, student speaker and student association president Lanji Kadeska. Interim Provost and Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs, Elgo Wolfert. Today's commencement speaker, Chief Executive Officer of Hertz Global Holdings, Catherine Marinello, Class of 1978. New York Senior U.S. Senator Charles E. Schumer. And the 20th President of the University at Albany, Dr. Avidan Rodriguez. President Rodriguez, I declare that the 175th commencement of the University at Albany, State University of New York, is now in session. Please remain standing or rise if you are able for the singing of the national anthem, which will be led by you Albany's chamber singers. So proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight 
on the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave on the land of the free? Please remain standing for the invocation, which will be offered by Catherine Reed, the director of UAlbany's Catholic Campus Ministry. Spirit of wisdom, we gather today in gratitude and celebration we gather to give thanks for all those receiving degrees today, for the spirit of knowledge, wisdom, and perseverance that has brought them here, for the spirit of joyful creation that invites them to embrace the world beyond the walls of this institution. We remember with gratitude all those who have supported, encouraged, challenged, questioned, and energized these graduates. Each parent, grandparent, spouse, child, sibling, and friend, each faculty, staff, and administration member, each mentor and coworker. We pray that you will bestow your warmest blessings on each person who is receiving a degree here today. For those who will pursue further education, may they have not only the knowledge they will need in their chosen fields, but also the wisdom to apply that knowledge to life as it really is. For those who will be going directly into the workforce, May they have a spirit of generosity and compassion, and may they find joy in their work and be a blessing to all the, those they encounter. As we gather to celebrate those receiving higher academic degrees, let us not forget that only a tiny fraction of the inhabitants of this crowded global community of ours hold such degrees. Therefore, we pray that we will use these degrees the doors they open and the knowledge they represent for the good of our communities and of all humanity. Amen. Please be seated. I now have the great pleasure of introducing to you the 20th president of the University at Albany, Dr. Avidan Rodriguez. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Muy buenos dias. Members of the University Council, honored guests, faculty, staff, alumni, family and friends, and certainly our beloved candidates for graduation today, it is my honor to welcome you to the 175th commencement of UAlbany, the University at Albany. This ceremony is always a very special one, and that it's even more the case today as we celebrate the 175th anniversary of the University at Albany's founding. On May 7, 1844, the state legislature voted to create the New York State Normal School, and the rest, as they say, it's history, 175 years worth. And we've come a long way in 175 years to become a major public research university with nearly 18,000 students, 
1,200 faculty members, and 180,000 alumni across the globe. But what has not changed across the generations is our commitment to excellence, and you are all direct evidence of that commitment. Today marks the end of a very important chapter in your life and the beginning of the next. Your education at UAlbany has created tremendous opportunities. And no matter where the next chapter leads you, you have opportunities to think, dream, and dream big, and act across cultural and natural boundaries beyond the moment, beyond you, what, what, what you once thought was possible. And this is critical because our communities and workplaces will look to you for solutions to their most urgent problems. To move forward, we need you to be leaders in all areas of life. We need you to be mentors and role models. We need you to think globally and act locally. We need you to be good friends and good neighbors and good community builder, builders. I can tell you from my personal experience, you will be amazed at what you will be able to achieve. And I am so inspired is that because UAlbany is truly an engine of opportunity, creating access and mobility for our communities, including first-generation students. In fact, 31% of our undergraduates will be the first in their families to earn a four-year degree. You may have noticed some purple and gold number one stickers on some of our graduates' caps. These are to identify our first-generation students. And now I would like to ask all our first-generation graduates to please rise and be recognized. Congratulations to each and every one of you. And no matter what the future holds for you, let me tell you something. I hope you will remember throughout your lives, never ever be afraid to take chances and make those difficult decisions. And whatever setbacks you encounter, don't ever, ever give up. As the great Nelson Mandela once said, do not judge me by my successes, judge me by how many times I fell down and got back up again. Once again, thank you for being at the University at Albany, and thank you for helping you Albany reach our vision, which is to be the nation's leading diverse public research university, providing the leaders knowledge and innovations to create a better world. We know what you have to offer. Thank you so very much for being here, and never, ever forget that you are the Great Danes. As you may have noticed, we have a very special guest with us on stage this morning. And it's my honor to welcome New York Seniors, United States Senator, Senate Minority Leader, Chuck Schumer. Congratulations to the class of 2019. You've made it. Now, first I'd like to announce my class gift. As you know, it's hard to pay for college. If you're poor, the federal government helps you out. That's a good thing. But what about the middle class? So a few years ago, I wrote a law, it's now on the books, that you or your parents, whoever paid for college, can take a full tax credit of $2,500 a year off your federal taxes for every year of college, provided, in Washington there's always a provided, provided your family income is below $200,000 a year. So if you come from a family that makes below $200,000, make sure you or mom or dad takes that tax credit. You know, last year, about one quarter of all the people who are entitled didn't because it's new. Now, if you forgot to do it last year or any of the previous years, you can fill a simple form out from the IRS. It's, it's just a page and get a check back for up to $7,500 in the mail. Not a bad class gift. Now, but we have to go further. I'm also working on legislation that will help you reduce your student debt burden once you get out of college. 
My goal, no one should pay more than a small percentage of their income any year for student debt. It's long past time our government tackled the student debt crisis once and for all. Now I have another class gift. You know, I come here every year because I want to congratulate you. And I write a nice speech. But you know, the weather isn't cooperating. Here's my second class gift. <laughs> to the class of 2019, congratulations. Thank you again, Senator Schumer, for your support of the University at Albany and for being us, with us today. Thank you again so very much. And it is now my honor to introduce to you our provost, Dr. Elga Wolford. Please welcome our provost. Good morning, everybody. It is my honor to introduce you a U Albany alumna from the class of 1978, who just happens to be the chief executive officer of Hertz Global Holdings, Ms. Catherine Marinello. Since 2017, she has led Hertz, one of the largest vehicle rental companies in the world, as one of only a handful of female CEOs in the country. In, yeah, you. <laughs> in fact, just this week, the latest Fortune 500 list came out, and it sets a new record. As of June 1st, 33 companies will be led by female CEOs. The highest total ever. And while that number represents only about 7% of the group as a whole, it certainly is trending in the right direction. Isn't it, ladies? Yeah. <laughs> Ms. Marinello's varied business background includes experience in automotive and consumer marketing, banking, business services, technology, and executive management. A former U Albany psychology major, like me, <laughs> she credits her degree with building her lifelong awareness of people's perceptions and motivations, which has directly impacted her success. Her experience includes leading companies such as GE, Citibank, Barclays, Area Management and Ceridian Corporation, and participating on boards of directors for companies such as General Motors and Volvo. An auto aficionado and mother of three, I personally look forward to hearing from Catherine and hope she might even share with us her ultimate choice in cars. <laughs> and now, Catherine Marinello from the class of 1978. So, <laughs> by the way, that is my roommate that I first met at State Quad when I first came to the school. Yeah, you go, girl! And a couple of my uh, fellow employees and friends from GE and currently from uh, Hertz. So, boy, that's a tough thing. Do I need to rip up my speech? I know, don't clap. Give me a break here. Um, <laughs> When I got the call um, and was asked to consider doing this commencement speech, I have to be honest with you, it was pretty amazing. And I thought to myself, wait a second, I graduated SUNY Albany, pretty ordinary student with a psychology degree. I worked washing dishes at State Quad. I was a waitress at Red Lobster, and I was checking people in at night at the Turf Inn to pay for my school. So why am I here? Why am I being asked? Well, you know, as you heard, I am in a rare group of people. Um, I'm one of 30 women running a Fortune 500, $10 billion company. Yeah. And so I thought it was really important to come today for you to understand that I was just one of you guys sitting out there 
Never did I have a clue that I would have this success. And there, there's not a real mystery to it. Um, I don't think about it every day. I get up at about 6 in the morning, walk my dogs, go to work, and get the job done. But I'm here, and I was just a normal kid in this audience not too long ago, I'd like to say. Um, I didn't have a spectacular academic career. I got a degree in psychology, and my plan was to go out and save the world. I wanted to make a difference. I was really focused on wanting to help underprivileged kids. Wanting to make an impact, and I tried. And for a couple of years, I was a foster care social worker for the Brooklyn Diocese of Catholic Charities. And I worked probably 100 hours a week. I will tell you, it was the hardest job I ever had. Um, it was beating and abused kids. It was horrific. And ultimately, I burnt out. And you could call that a failure, but I did give it my all for a few years. I went the full nine yards, and I finally said, I've got to find a different way. And so I left social work, but I had to get a job, and I had to pay the bills. And so what were my competencies to fall back on? I took a ton of statistics here as a part of my psychology degree, and I was good at numbers. So I talked my way into a accounting job, a cost accounting job. And I worked at a metal, a metal desk in the middle of the manufacturing floor, basically counting numbers, adding things up, weighing things. Um, it was an unbelievably boring job. Um, but it did pay the bills, and I did learn how companies make money. But part of what has gotten me through the years is figuring out how to have fun. And through this boring job, we would listen to the radio, we'd play tunes, and whoever would figure out the name of the tune first got points. The one with the most points got free beers that night when we all went out to drink beers, right? So it is about having fun and figuring out how to make the best of a tough situation. So ultimately, I did realize I've got to do something different. This is not going to make it for me long term. And I went back to school. I worked full time, and I went to school full time at night, and I got my MBA. And so ultimately, again, I ended up here, being asked here, because I ran a Fortune 500, $10 billion company managing a million cars and 40,000 people around the world. That is friggin' awesome, guys, right? <laughs> and I love it, right? And so I think not just for the women here, but for all you guys here, you know, it's an amazing journey, but anybody here in this audience can have your own amazing end and have that awesome job. And so, you know, I, I didn't have a clue back then. I was afraid. I had no idea what I was going to do, but I got it done. So a little bit of advice, and I think I want to start first and foremost with what you do when you're successful. And I think no matter where you go and what you do, you have to continue to serve others. And all along the way, what has motivated me and made me the leader that I am is my passion for making things better for people, people I work with, people who I have served in the community, and people need a little extra help. And my faith has been an incredible driver behind this. It sustained and reinforced the responsibility I feel to share the gifts that I've been given with the rest of the world and do good in the world. To that end, um, I have, because of my success, had the means to do good. I provide homes for foster children and support that work. I provide mentoring opportunities, and I built a community center in my neighborhood that helps to train and helps kids with school skills. And kids who aren't going to graduate high school basically get them their credits and get them through the school. And I continue my passion to help underserved minority youth at Hertz. We've established a scholarship foundation to help kids through college and find their way. So as a, from a business perspective, um, I'm a servant leader. Um, I have a very simple plan for success. If I take care of my employees, they take care of the customers. The customers come back because they love the service and the people that they meet. And in the end, we make more money. We're investing back in the company. And we can create careers for the people working for us. And when you give people a career, they're proud, 
they give back to their community, they do service, and right now I feel like we're creating 40,000 people that go out into their community and do good. So now for some practical advice, and if you talk to my kids, they, they love to hear me give practical advice, no. And parents out there, there's good news. They will eventually see the wisdom. And to that end, I have three sons, and right now they're all working, so that's also good news for you guys. Um, but for the most part, they did listen. And it will come full circle. There will things, parents there and professors, there will be things you share with these students that they do find in their jobs and apply in their jobs and their lives that make a difference. So seven tips that I share with my sons and I'll share with you. When you're going into a job, be all in and go in there to make an impact. Look around and ask yourself what needs to get done that's not getting done, and then don't overthink it, just get it done. Be the first into work and always show up. Stay relevant, do the extra time and put in the extra effort to continuously upgrade your skills. Be committed. If you don't love your job, quit and get one you love. And then finally, work hard. Raise your hand, step up, take the hard job that others shy away from because of the difficulty or risk, and hit it out of the park through hard work and tenacity. You'll grow from it, and I guarantee you'll be recognized. So for the parents who love these graduates and were supportive all along the way, I will tell you again, my kids are all gainfully employed. It's a beautiful thing, and yours will be too. And believe it or not, they now ask me for advice unsolicited. Very few people, though, obtain success by simply being in the right place at the right time or winning with a single project or transaction. Shortcuts really don't pay off, but the simple formula of hard work, tenacity, and doing what you love will make a very ordinary person like me end up with extraordinary success and happiness in life. And that leads me to my final piece of advice. You have to work at happiness. It is hard work. It doesn't just happen. You make your own happy. It's work, but it's the best kind of work. And when I'm having a bad day, and I feel like I didn't do a great job, I go home and I tell myself, tomorrow, double up, make twice the impact. And I go in, I hit it out of the park, and the success I have that day overrides any kind of sense of sadness or feeling of failure. And then guess what? Here's another great hint. If I'm tired, pissed off, overworked, I do something to treat myself. And if it's been really hard, it's really expensive and really fun. And if it's just a bad day, I maybe will call my old roommate up here get her to tell me a joke or laugh, and get out of the funk. But I refuse to be unhappy for more than a day, and I do think that's made a huge difference in my life. And never forget, you can be happy, you can make your own happy. So, with this, everybody, I know your saying is, unleash your own greatness. You may not believe it or understand it yet, but I would have never thought sitting in the, this chair that I would have been able to unleash the greatness that I've gotten in my life and the achievement. So go out there, guys. Kill it and prove them you can be great and extraordinary. God bless you. Have fun today. Thank you, Catherine. And good morning, everyone. I'm Mike Christakis, class of 2001 and 2005. Yes, thank you, and the Vice President for Student Affairs. I've had the privilege of getting to know so many of you over the past few years, and based on my interactions, I can assure you that this graduating class is a special group of individuals who are truly committed to UAlbany and its ideals. A perfect example of that commitment is this year's class gift, a way for students, parents, and friends to give back to UAlbany. The class gift also serves as a living tribute to great memories, an outstanding education, and a bright future. Selected by UAlbany's Student Philanthropy Council, this year's class gift is in support of UAlbany's Student Emergency Fund, a program designed to help those experiencing unforeseen financial hardship or emergency, 
with the goal of keeping more students on track toward graduation. I am so proud to announce that over 500 students, parents, faculty, and staff pledged over $19,000 for the Student Emergency Fund. Thank you. It is now my distinct pleasure to introduce our student speaker, Langi Kadeska. <laughs> Hang on, I've got more. I've got more. Langi is graduating with a Bachelor of Arts degree with honors in criminal justice. In recognition of her academic achievements, she recently received a SUNY Chancellor's Award for Student Excellence and the University's President's Award as an Outstanding Senior. Though many of you recognize her as the outgoing president of the Student Association or as a purple and gold ambassador, it is because of her academic achievements that she was able to apply and earn the chance to be your student speaker this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome one of the greats, Langi Kadeska. Good afternoon, everyone. Wait, we're graduating today. I didn't hear anything. Good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> Greetings to President Rodriguez, Provost Wolfert, distinguished faculty, staff, families, and my fellow graduates. I approach this day and the amazing opportunity to offer remarks with humility, excitement, and if I'm to be completely honest, a little bit nervous. First and foremost, I would like to acknowledge my ancestry for laying down a foundation for me, especially to my mom, who always stood by me. As I was reflecting on what to offer this wonderful assemblage of family members who have invested many prayers, affirming thoughts, words of encouragement, and more, administrators and faculty who lend their time and creativity to make you Albany the institution that it is, and graduating seniors who have worked hard, overcome obstacles, written papers, performed research, and last but not least, met the requirements for graduation, I was flooded with emotions and thoughts around my journey from New York City public school system to this day is. I imagine that like many of you, I gained invaluable perspective and insight on a life throughout my four years here at UAlbany. Inside the classroom, I challenge myself to learn new perspectives and challenge the status quo. Some of my greatest academic experience include studying abroad in India, where I learned that different cultures have many similarities. Joining the Student Association, which allowed me to advocate on behalf of thousands of students. Becoming a member of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated, where I learned how being a sister to those in and outside of the organization build lifelong relationships. And even the simplest things such as hanging out in the campus center, podiating instead of going to class when it's warm out, <laughs> all of these experiences have lit a fire in me that could have only been developed at UAlbany. Yet today, I'd also like to share some lessons that I learned outside of the classroom. Service to others is not only a gift to the community, but a gift to oneself as well. Through service, it's become clear and cognizant that our global community becomes its best when we are sensitive to the needs of others and make the pivot from someone should do something to what can I do to make a difference in the life of others. It really is okay to enter a situation without having the answers to every question. It takes courage and conviction to admit that we are still works in progress and to understand that there are safe havens where we can ask questions, seek guidance, lean on others, and make mistakes. 
I have experienced growth and development so much that if I were to be able to embark on the journey of your lives, I would give the following advice. Be confident. There will be no shortage of people to question you, second guess you, or discourage you from taking risk. Even if you're unsure of the outcome, by appreciating that there are no guarantees in life, it is important to survey the landscape, consider your options, and move forward with confidence and optimism. Choose to surround yourself with people who are willing to encourage you and tell you what you need to hear, even if you may not want to hear it. Life is a team sport, not an individual undertaking. I think the song says it pretty well. Lean on me when you're not strong. I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry on. It's easy thank you, and tempting to try to go it alone, but the best and most effective teams practice interdependence. In Haiti, our motto is l'union fait la force. In unity, there is strength. By surrounding oneself with good teammates, you learn to exploit your strengths and enhance the positive attributes of your teammates. Last but not least, as I recall my experiences, the most important message of all is don't doubt your message because there is power in your purpose and there is power in your platform. You Albany graduates, go forth and make your mark on the world because this is our time. Thank you and congratulations to the class of 2019. Thank you, Angie, that was awesome. Now please welcome Rochelle Conian, class of 1995 and president of the UAlbany Alumni Association. Rochelle. As president of the Alumni Association, it is my honor to join you on your special day. On behalf of over 180,000 alumni of this great institution, it is my pleasure to welcome you into the University at Albany Alumni Association. I have been where you are today, so I know the joy and perhaps even a little of the trepidation you may be feeling as you face the future. Remember this. The Alumni Association is here to help. We've been serving our U Albany graduates since our creation almost 175 years ago. Whether through our graduates of the last decade, our gold, alumni events, regional activities, Great Dane pregame events and viewing parties, career advisory services, or interacting with our social media accounts, the Alumni Association can help you stay connected with friends and classmates while offering a vast alumni network for career opportunities and more. Our goal is the same as yours, for you to live up to your fullest potential and succeed in all your endeavors. There are currently you Albany alumni in all of the 50 states and in 129 countries 
on six continents. Today, you join that remarkable family. Your hard work has paid off, and now you're an alumnus of the University at Albany. I could not be prouder to be your Alumni Association President. Congratulations and go Great Danes! It is now my pleasure to welcome you Albany's all-female a cappella group Serendipity. who have several members graduating today to sing the alma mater, which is printed on page 29 of your program. Please rise if you are able and join in. Ever in men nervous all Pass the torch from one to all Guide each destiny Meet the purple and the gold Let the history unfold Sons and daughters, young and old Hail to Albany Please be seated. I'm sure many of you would agree that success is truly a community effort. As we move along in our ceremony, and with the sun finally out and shining, <laughs> I would like to take this opportunity to thank every member of our faculty, staff, and extended U Albany family for their support and dedication to our graduates. But now, graduates, it's your turn to show your appreciation. You are joined today by members of your family, parents, children, grandparents, siblings, as well as members of your extended families and friends. Each of them helped you to reach this triumphant moment in your lives. Before we move on with the ceremony, graduates, please stand, turn to your families, friends, and faculty, and let them hear from you how much you appreciate all they have done for you. Please be seated. Mm -hmm. And now, among our graduates today are those who are graduating with academic honors. The names of these graduates are signified by an asterisk in your program, and the graduates themselves are wearing honor medallions. I ask those students who are graduating from our honors college, as well as students graduating cum laude, magna cum laude, or summa cum laude, to please rise now and receive our congratulations. <laughs> and 
And we now move to the recognition of our bachelor's candidates who will receive their baccalaureate degrees under a wide range of academic majors. The degree candidates will be introduced by Interim Vice Provost for Undergraduate Education, Joanne Malatesta, a proud U Albany alumna from the classes of 1999 and 2008. Thank you, Provost Wolfert, and good morning, all. Congratulations, graduates. We will introduce our degree candidates by school or college. Are you ready? <laughs> First, will the degree candidates with majors in the School of Social Welfare please rise and be recognized? Congratulations. <laughs> Will the degree candidates with majors in the School of Public Health please rise and be recognized? Congratulations. <laughs> please be seated. Will the degree candidates with majors in the Nelson A. Rockefeller College of Public Affairs and Policy please rise and be recognized? <laughs> Will the degree candidates with majors in the College of Nanoscale Science and Engineering please rise? Congratulations. Will the degree candidates with majors in the College of Engineering and Applied Sciences please rise and be recognized? <laughs> Will the degree candidates with majors in the College of Emergency Preparedness, Homeland Security, and Cybersecurity please rise? Will the degree candidates with majors in the School of Education please rise? Congratulations. Will the degree candidates with majors in the School of Criminal Justice please rise? Congratulations. Will the degree candidates with majors in the School of Business please rise? <laughs> Congratulations. And finally, will the degree candidates with majors in the College of Arts and Sciences please rise? <laughs> Congratulations to you all, and please remain standing, remain standing. I now ask all candidates for the degrees Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science to rise for conferral of the degree. President Rodriguez. These candidates have completed a program broadly based in the fundamental fields of the arts and sciences with specialized study in the area appropriate to their individual courses of study. In the name of these faculties, I have the honor of presenting these candidates to you that you may confer upon them the degree Bachelor of Arts or Bachelor of Science as appropriate. Thank you. Once again, muy buenos dias. I'm not sure if you noticed something. Despite all the weather forecasts, when Angie Ladesca, class of 2019, got up, the skies cleared, the sun came out, 
which is a clear indication that your future is bright, exciting, and you will forever unleash greatness. And now, for the moment that everyone here, families and friends and faculty and staff, and especially our graduates, have been waiting for. By the virtue of the authority vested in me by the regions of the State of New York and the trustees of the State University of New York, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Bachelor of Arts or Bachelor of Science as earned with all the rights, all the privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereunto. Felicidades! Congratulations, everybody! Optimistic believers answers an extraordinary call to better instill knowledge in others in order to change the world. And in that moment, our greatness was born. Our greatness was born. What started as a school to train teachers took on a life of its own and grew into so much more. For 175 years, we pushed forward the boundaries of knowledge and defied limitations. Our researchers discovered how to summon snow from the sky and mastered the Earth's movements. Our faculty paved paths to the bright lights of Broadway and beyond. Our alumni blazed trails so groundbreaking that the world was forever changed. And at the center of it all, our students, energetic, independent, and inspirational, have gone forth generation after generation as vibrant testaments to the excellence and enthusiasm that beats in the heart of this place. Together, brick by brick, we've built this world-class public research university where innovations take flight, where drive leads to discoveries, where presidents and VIPs come to marvel and where great minds are at work. Leading the charge, challenging conventions, turning obstacles into opportunities. Today, we're seizing our moment and building upon our legacy with our largest academic expansion in half a century. We're increasing our impact around the globe. And creating a community of extraordinary leaders, thinkers, entrepreneurs, and committed citizens doing the things that matter. Making a difference. This is our time to write the next great chapter of U Albany's history. This is our moment to unleash greatness in all that we do. Because the world needs greatness. And just as we have done for 175 years, the University at Albany, the Great Danes, will continue to answer the call. You are now all a part of this tremendous tradition. Congratulations. Uh, as we prepare to conclude this ceremony, please remain in your seats until the platform party is exited. Uh, when that has happened, feel free to join in with your family and friends in the podium area. We respectfully ask that you refrain from coming up to the stage. But one more time, congratulations and President Rodriguez, I declare that at the 175th commencement of the University at Albany is now concluded. Congratulations. Congratulations.